Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over how to use MLflow. For those that are not familiar with MLflow, it is a way to track your training for different models and um, be able to view metrics and organize yourself whenever you're getting into artificial intelligence and training it. Uh, I'm going to preface this by saying I am not an expert in artificial intelligence. I just know how to use this tool and I thought this video would be really good for anybody that is trying to figure out how to use it. Um, so before we get started, this is basically their quick start guide on their docs, but it I can kind of give a little bit of um, explanation on how these things work and uh, how to get started with the Python API. So first things first, uh, you're going to need to know how to use Conda. If not, I will have a video for how to use Conda on one of my channels. Um, if you go ahead and search up Conda, I guarantee you'll also know how to get that all situated. There's plenty of tutorials online. But uh, as you can see, I'm in an environment called ML Training, and then I'm in my directory, so under my projects. And here I have imported MLflow. I have from mlflow.models, import infer signature. So we're going to be inferring the signature of the model. So we're going to see what the input and output is. Uh, and we'll be able to use that for whatever it may be. Um, and then I import a few things from sklearn. And for those that don't know what sklearn is, sklearn is a package to assist you in uh, creating you know, AI models. So you can actually use it to predict on data and to identify uh, data and whatnot. So it's really cool. Definitely a package worth looking into if you're trying to learn how to do um, artificial intelligence and machine learning, that kind of thing. So first things first, um, what you're going to need is to know what MLflow is. So MLflow is, again, it's a tracking service. You basically spin up a server and MLflow will host a server on your machine of choice. So we're probably going to do it on the local host today. So I set the tracking URI to, um, which is just the, you know, where it's located. So this is going to be the uh, website link. Um, and for me, that's going to be the local host, local host at port 5000. And then this is just some data set stuff from sklearn, so we're going to be using that. Um, we're going to be setting that up. We're going to split the data into training and test sets. Um, and then you have your parameters. And then we train the model. So we, we actually have the training here. And then um, we predict on the test set. So we can actually predict off of that. And we can calculate the um, metrics. I just noticed that I have the tracking URI in two different locations, so we're going to go ahead and copy that. Do, 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 do. And then put this here. Sorry about that, guys. I'm pretty sure um, that also works that there, but now this was all again from the quick start guide. So you have your experiment, which is the MLflow quick start. And then that was just a training here. Um, but then we can start an MLflow run simply by doing this. You set the tracking URI, and then you set the experiment name. And then with that, you have a call in your Python training script for training your model, and it will be mlflow.startrun. So with mlflow start run, it starts the run, of course, um, and it has all of this input here. Um, you can get all that information from the docs, and if you have autocomplete in VS Code, you will also get that. But you log your hyperparameters, so you can actually log your hyperparameters here. Um, you also can log uh, metrics individually, so you do want to log your metrics, obviously, your accuracy, precision, recall, all that. And then you can set the tag right here. So you can set a tag to your models, 
and that's where we infer the signature, so what the input and output is. And for those that are kind of new to artificial intelligence and kind of how this works, um, the log params, these are how you tune your models, um, hyperparameters, and your metrics are what you track to see how the model improves. Um, from here, we then have our actual model where we log the model itself, and then this is us using the model down here. So this just shows that we can actually use this. So first things first, uh, we're going to go ahead and actually get the MLflow server running. So um, it should be fairly simple to actually get this up and running. Um, one of the first things you have to worry about, though, whenever you're getting this up is uh, what do you want to track when it comes to your training and your runs? Because you can actually do the training and see live updates as you log different things. And again, this is just a logging system, so it's pretty easy to just get the logger up and running and you're set and ready to go. Um, like, again, you can log over certain things and you can log inside of runs and uh, you'll see in a moment what I mean by that. But we'll do mlflow server dash dash host, and then we'll do local host, and then we can do port 5000. And then this will spin up our server for mlflow. And as you can see, we have our link here, and that is our, um, this will be our server that we go to, and we're going to let that kind of run. Once it's up and running, we will actually have our server, and this is what it will look like. So now we have our MLflow server up and running. It's down here. Um, let me kind of exit out of full screen on VS Code. But uh, I have our quick start guide here as well if we need to reference that. Um, but right here we have MLflow, and this is what it looks like. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so y'all can see better, because um, sometimes it comes in a little glitchy. But you have access to the docs directly. You can start a new run, um, and it also has a model registry. So for those that don't know what that means, this is just a place to keep your good models. So all the models that actually are very good, uh, you can store them here. You can also um, serve them from here, as in you can download your models using the Python API and uh, actually call from them. So that's pretty cool. You can get them to predict on different things and um, whatnot. So. First things first, you have your Experiments tab, and this is the default Experiments tab. It's empty right now, but as you can see, you have your run name, so this is the name of the run under the Experiment, which is here, default, and then you have when it was created, you have the data set that you used, the duration of the run, so this could be a whole training run, and you normally want to put your training inside of the run, that's just how I've done it. Um, in the past, so uh, we do that, and then this is the source, where it came from, and then you can actually see the model, it'll be here. But currently we do not have any runs logged, so what we'll do, I'm going to open up another terminal, and then we are going to actually run our run here. So this will be our main.py. So what we'll do is Python and then we will do main.py, and then we're going to run it, and it says there's no module named mlflow. So what we may have to do is uh, make sure that mlflow installed correctly. Okay, I just needed a quick restart, and it was able to work. Uh, not entirely sure why it didn't work there to begin with, but um, here we go. If we go ahead and run this, this is the same script. Um, I just ran it from here instead. And you'll see the experiment name with mlflow quick start does not exist. 
Um, we have our uh, metrics logged for accuracy. We have our tag, we have our signature and everything like that getting logged. Um, and what you will see is that the model should show up here. And it's not showing currently because we don't have an experiment. But if we go ahead and refresh here, you'll see that we have our experiment with MLflow Quick Start. We have a, a random run name. And this run name, I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit because I feel like it's not shown as well. Um, but we have our run name, the time it was created, the data set, which we didn't actually log a data set, but we can. Um, the duration of the logging, so the training, um, you can put that, you can put the training under there. Um, the source, so it was a main.py script on a computer, and it actually logged the model for us. It even put it in the registry for us. Um, and you can see it here, it's called tracking quick start, it's the name of the model. And then it has our version. So we have the um, input and the output. So the data type is a float64 with that specified shape. And then we have a, and this is a tensor as well. Um, and then we have a tensor of a data type uh, int64. So pretty cool stuff. Um, and if we go to the MLflow quick start, we can actually see a lot more if we click on the run. We have a description section. We also have a data set section, um, which would show the data set if we logged the data set. Here are our parameters. We have a random state, the solver, the um, multi-class, the max iterations. This is all stuff that comes from sklearn as well. Like you can log all these different parameters. Um, and then we have our accuracy. So if we actually look here, we have an accuracy of one which is insanely good. Um, and then we have our tags. So training info, basic LR model for iris data. So we have all of that. And here are all of the artifacts. So all these artifacts, it has the model schema like we uh, saw over in the model registry. We also have a way to make predictions. It tells you how to do that. Um, using a pandas data frame or a spark data frame. Um, we have ML model information, so um, just different things about the model. Uh, and this comes with ML uh, project files that you can also create in MLflow. This is the conda environment that you can use to actually get the model and predict off of it. You only need these things, only these things. And then we have the inputs, an example of inputs. We have the pickle, which is the actual model. That's our model file. And then we have the Python environment, um, just for getting that situated. And then the requirements. So if you just need um, to actually get the Python environment and the requirements, there's more information there. But this is the Conda um, environment, if you'd like prefer that. But that is all for MLflow. That's basically what you can do with it uh, from a very, very surface level view. I might make some more videos on MLflow and how to utilize it um, from making a SK Learn script that is a little bit more in depth uh, and will actually log the training results and uh, give us some more graphs and whatnot. So. Thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I hope this was informative on figuring things out when it comes to MLflow. Thank you for watching.